go. Awesome. All right, praise God. We're live. So welcome everybody to Vision Church of Lockhart. I am the associate pastor and English pastor, Pastor Kyle. And uh, welcome to y'all here. Man, we're excited to continue our series on the new you and the Holy Spirit. Learning how uh, just to apply practical principles, you know, to our everyday life. And once we give our life to Christ, like, where do we go from there? So we're building block upon block, and um, we're going somewhere. Amen? Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, right? When you're laying that foundation, it doesn't feel like you're going anywhere. Um, but we're going somewhere. Praise the Lord. God's taking us places. So tonight we're on Lesson 5, uh, Build a Sure Foundation. Build a Sure Foundation. Praise God. So we don't want to build a foundation that looks good. Amen. It looks good to religious people. Religious people look at our life like, oh, man, it looks so good. But there's cracks in it that, that can't necessarily be seen. Amen. Because we try to cut certain corners in our life. And uh, so we're learning how to really build a sure foundation amen. on the word of God, the rock that cannot, that will not be moved. And uh, that's on Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Praise God. So I hope that you all can hear me, by the way, online. Um, I can't use the mic tonight. We're having some electrical problems, but uh, so I hope, anyways, I hope you all can hear me. But let's go ahead and pray, and let's jump into this. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that there is, there is nothing higher, no higher authority. We thank you, Lord, that, you know, the, the earth is going to pass away, um, the heavens, Lord, but we just thank you that your word lives forever. Your word will stand forever. And uh, that's something that we can really just attach ourselves to tie ourselves to and know god that we're going to be okay as long as we look to you look to your word we're going to be okay we're going to get through it because your word is indestructible thank you father incorruptible thank you jesus and we know that as long as we trust in your word we will not be put to shame in jesus name amen amen, amen. so let's go ahead and start this and you can follow along in your outlines there so the bible is god's word he will give you wisdom and guidance through it. Praise God. It's so important we understand that the Bible is the Word of God. It's not just some encouragement, you know, or, or um, some good rules to live by or uh, some just, a, just some good principles to live by to turn you into more of a moral person. I mean, the Bible is God's Word, right? It's God's Word. It's not, it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. His words, he says, they're, they're, they're not just words, but they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step to really, you know, understanding the word of God is understanding what it is. Who is it coming from? Amen. So the Bible is God's word. He will give you wisdom and guidance through it. As newborn babes, Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, it says in 1 Peter 2, 2. Praise God. So, you know, how do you know as a Christian, you are not going to grow by anything other than God's word. Now, it's okay to have supplements. It's okay to listen to Christian music. That's a good supplement. It's okay to uh, listen to messages, amen, online or, you know, at church. But those are supplements that should never, ever replace God's word. This is how we grow. If you're not in God's word and you're just relying on Christian music and, and messages to grow you up, let me tell you, you're not going to grow. You've got to get in the word yourself. <laughs> those are supplements. This is what our main source should be right here. And I just, you know, I, I like Christian music. I, of course, I like Christian radio, but... You know, I've, I've heard so many testimonies of um, Christian radio, and during the commercials, they'll, they'll have somebody give a testimony like, oh my gosh, you know, I just, I don't know what I would do without this music, and I don't, and um, it's almost like, it's okay to be encouraged by Christian music, but it's almost like they look to the Christian music for their source, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, but it should be a supplement. How much are we in the Word of God? Because yeah, Christian music, it may give you a little boost, a little encouragement throughout the day, you know, like a five-hour energy drink, but it's not going to sustain you when you're going through the storm. <laughs> Amen? It might give you a little pep talk, <laughs> get you stirred up a little bit in your spirit, but it's not going to sustain you through the storm. Amen? When the doctor gives you bad news, the Christian music's not going to sustain you. It's not going to heal you. 
Because only one thing is spirit and life, and that is the word of God. Praise God. So, anyways, I hope we understand that. Uh, as a baby draws sustenance from its mother's breast, so a new believer is nourished by spiritual milk from the Bible. You will grow as you feed often on God's word. God's word is God-breathed. In uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. The Bible is charged with the very life of God, and it will come alive to you as you read it. And the reason for that is because God's word is not just a book, but it is a person. We have to understand that. In John 1, he says, Jesus was the word. Amen? In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. So it's not like this is just a book, like this is who God is. Through this, we understand who God is. We understand a little bit more about how he thinks. Amen? So uh, through his word, you will get to know this awesome, loving God who has saved you. You will grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ and become thoroughly, uh, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. God will speak directly to you through the Bible. In Hebrews 4.12, it says, For the word of God is quick, it's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And something just clicked in my mind as I was reading that. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper. What does that mean? Something that's quick and sharp, it can penetrate through anything, right? If, it's, if something is sharp, but it's not very quick, you know, you're, you're not gonna, it's not gonna penetrate through much, it's not gonna cut through much, but when, and if something is quick, but it's not sharp, it's not gonna cut through much, right? But if it's quick and sharp and powerful, praise God. That thing's gonna, that thing could cut through anything. And I just, what came to my mind is, you know, I, I like wars and things, and, and I just remember, um, you know, in, in history class, I, I wish I remember the, the name of it, but in World War II, the Germans used a, uh, a technique that was, that kind of took the military world by storm, and it's how they conquered countries so, uh, so quickly when they started trying to, you know, take over the world. And I probably have this wrong, and forgive me if I do, but I, I'm off the tip of my, um, off the top of my head, I think it's called like Blitz, Blitzkrieg or something like that. But anyways, it was a military tactic in order, what they, what they did, the Germans did, is they would attack suddenly and swiftly with tons of military force. That's how they would uh, take the enemy by surprise and just overwhelm them. Amen. And that's what came to my mind when I th when the word says this, Hebrews 4.12. The word of God is quick and is powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword. It can pierce through anything. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what your problem is. God's word is sharper. It's quicker. It's more powerful. It can splice through it. If you're dealing with, with debt, if you're dealing with stress, with, with pressure from, from the world, from your boss. Amen. I'm telling you that God's word is more powerful, it's sharper, it's quicker. Whatever you need help in, if, you're, if your divorce is, if, divorce, if your marriage is crumbling, I'm telling you God's word is sharper, it's more powerful. Amen. Whatever we have need of, we can go to God's word for that help, for that guidance. And, uh, and, and God, he's just amazing at taking our crumbling life and putting it back together. But we've got to let him put it back together. Amen. We've got to submit to him, to his authority. Instead of trying to do things our way and then ask God to just bless it, right? Well, I heard somewhere that God was a good God, so God just fix everything. Well, it doesn't quite work like that. We, we've got we've to submit to God's ways. Otherwise, God can put it back together and uh, we'll just mess it up again because we've never learned any lessons. We never grew from, from the experience or anything. Amen? So don't just use your head to read this book. Come to the Word with an open heart ready to receive from God. That's our prayer that, that we should always have before we read God's word is, God, show me. Amen? Reveal it to me. If you don't understand something in God's word, that's okay. Just ask God to show you, and he will. And sometimes it's right at that moment. Sometimes it's a week later, a month later, a year later. Um, but he'll show us when we're ready. Right? Jesus told his disciples, I have many things to say to you, but you are not ready to hear them right now. And so... Some things we're just too immature to, uh, to be ready to understand. And we've, we've just got to trust God that he's going to show us the truth, the revelation at the right time when we're ready for it. 
and then when we're mature enough to handle it. You don't, you don't tell your kids about you know, the birds and the bees and get all detailed about it, right, when they're at a young age. Why? They're not mature enough to handle it. Amen? But when they come of maturity, and um, that's when you can reveal more to them because they, they can actually understand it. And that's how God is with us. He, he wants to just, he loves us so much, he wants us to understand everything, but we're limited in our immaturity. And so that should tell you the problem's not God. We're not waiting on God. God's waiting on us to grow up a little bit <laughs> so he can show us some more things. Mm -hmm. Amen? Um, praise God. Okay, so choose a version of the Bible that is easy to understand. God doesn't want language style to hinder you from getting to know him. And then Andrew says here for himself, personally, I use the King James Version because it's what I grew up on. However, you may find the old English phrases too difficult to understand. If that's the case, select a Bible to your liking and read, study, and meditate on what it says. Any version you use is superior to not reading the Bible at all. The Holy Spirit can lead you to other translations later on, but laying a solid foundation of God's Word in your heart is what is most important right now, right? And, um, you know, a really easy translation to understand, and I think that is fairly accurate, is the New Living Translation. So if, you have a, if you're having trouble understanding your current Bible, I would say get, a, get the New Living Translation. There's other ones out there that you can get, you know, but I would say start there, and, uh, and you'll grow, and you're, you know... For myself, I know, well, I have the New King James Version, but I also compare it with other translations just to, I don't know, just get a new wrinkle, amen? New, different translations have different wrinkles in them. And uh, so that's, that's what I personally do, but um, anyways, I do, new, I do use the New Living Translation. I use the Amplified Bible. I, so I don't use the King James <laughs> because, you know, it's just not my style. But anyways, just choose one translation and uh, go from there and you'll grow in your use of it. So a, a basic understanding of the Bible is very helpful. I never went to seminary or Bible school, but I studied the Bible 16 hours a day. It, uh, let me see, let me make sure I'm not skipping anything. Yeah, it revolutionized my life. Some things I learned right away and others took me many years. And man, it's kind of like getting a brand new car, right? When you're jumping into the word of God, um, it's kind of like getting a brand new car where you have to learn the gadgets and the gizmos and it's different than your other car probably. And you've got to learn, okay, this does this, this does that, this is where this button is, this controls this technology, right? So that's how it is um, in, in understanding God's word and, and learning how to use it in the right circumstances in life. Okay, so some things he says I learned right away and others took me many years. But you can never exhaust the depths of God's word. Everything you need for life and godliness can be found in it. And that's why we need to understand that when it comes to understanding the word of God, when it comes to living for God, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a sprint. Amen? It's not like, oh man, I need to learn all of this like this week. That's impossible. There's no way. There's no way. Um, it's, it's a marathon. So we really need to pace ourselves and be patient with ourselves. It's okay if you make a mistake. It's okay if you don't understand something. Right? Just be patient with yourself and, um, and keep going. I think Satan often discourages us from, you know, from, from living right or just you know, being in God's word because oh, we just feel so discouraged if we make one mistake. But that's going to happen. Just be patient. Amen? Because God is patient with us. So everything that we need for life and godliness can be found in God's word. I wish somebody had explained to me the difference between the old covenant which is Genesis through Malachi, and the New Covenant, which is Matthew through Revelation, right? Uh, this is when I, first, when I was first saved. It took me a long time to discover that God deals with people totally differently from one covenant to the other, right? Mm -hmm. When you go to the Old Testament, and you, you're like, man, God ain't playing. Like, if you mess up, you know, you don't get struck with leprosy or something, or he's going to wipe out you and your whole tribe. Amen. And you go to the New Testament and Jesus is over here, you know, praying for sinners, healing sinners and all these sick people. And he said, you know, I didn't come to save the well. I came to save the sick. I didn't come to condemn. I came to redeem. Right. And so you're just like, hmm, you know, what's, what's going on here? And uh, some people have a hard time reconciling those two. But it's not that we serve a different God. It's just we're in a different covenant. Right. Amen. The blood of Jesus wasn't shed for those. In the Old Testament. So you can literally say from Matthew on, 
everything changed. Everything. Amen. You know? And you really see the true heart of God because God, through the commandments, yes, yes God is righteous and God will execute um, judgment on unrighteousness. We see that in Revelation even. You know, so it's not like you never see the judgment of God in the New Testament. I mean, you do at times, but you just, you can tell it's, it's a very, seems like a very different God. But it's the same God, just different covenants that he deals with us on. Amen? And the, and the blood of Jesus that was shed for mankind, I'll tell you, it changed everything. And God's heart is really revealed through the life of Jesus. Amen? It's not revealed through the Ten Commandments. Although the Ten Commandments are good, they're holy, they're just, there's nothing wrong with them. But uh, we really see God's heart through Jesus Christ. Amen? And that's why Jesus said, I've come to reveal uh, who God is. Praise God. So, and that's why the, the religious people, they just, Jesus was a stumbling block to them. I mean, they just didn't understand. They're like, our whole life, we've studied the law, right? The Pharisees, our whole life, we've studied the law, and God does this and does that. If you mess up, he'll get you, and, and things like that. And there's people still preaching that way, almost like we're living under the law. But the Bible says that, that once uh, one husband has died, you know, you're free to be married to another. And we've died to the law, is what the Bible says in Romans, so that we can be married to Jesus Christ. Amen? It's the revelation of grace. That's what Jesus came to reveal to us. Grace, grace, grace. So, grace and truth. That's, that's who Jesus is. And um, it's so important that we understand these truths and that we continue to grow in these truths. And that takes time. It takes time to grow in that. So, um, <clears throat> it, so, he says, It took me a long time to discover that God deals with people totally differently from one covenant to the other. Most Christians see the Bible as one unit, all saying the same thing. They can't comprehend why the same God shows so much wrath and judgment in the Old Testament and so much grace and mercy in the New. They don't realize how everything changed between God and man once Jesus Christ came to earth. You and I are in the new covenant in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So, you know, we shouldn't be looking back. I mean, it's, it's good for us to study the Old Testament. And, and, and there, those were written to us as examples, right? The men and women that we can study in the Old, Old Testament, the Old Covenant. Uh, it still applies to us today in certain aspects, not in every aspect, but uh, definitely there's many great lessons. I love the Old Testament. I love reading it. Amen. It stirs my faith up. Um, and so because you see God in the in the Old Testament uh, as well. I mean, that's his word. But, you know, I, there, there's just it's it's God ch has changed in, in the sense of of, of um, you know, how he deals with. With us, Amen. And so we, we've got to stop. We've got to stop living and acting like we're like we're operating in the old covenant. In other words, we've got to stop looking at what was. We've got to stop. You know, we're dead to the law, right? We're we're dead to our ourselves. So let's stop looking at what was. Let's stop. You know, keeping on um, uh, digging up our our past and digging up. You know, going to the grave to what's dead and, and digging up the old covenant. And, you know, those things, we're, we're dead to that, right? We're, we're raised new in Christ. So we need to really stop focusing on what was and what's dead and focus on what is and what's to come. Praise God. That's what God is calling us to do. And like, like Lot's wife, you know, she turned into a pillar of salt because she was looking back at the judgment that was taking place in Sodom and Gomorrah. Praise God. We need, we need to stop. We need not to look back and, and turn into a pillar of salt. You know what Jesus says? Jesus says we are the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. And Christians who are continually looking back to the old covenant, they're like that salt that lost its flavor. You have nothing to offer the world. Nothing. Amen? Because you're so judgmental and you're so hypocritical because that's what the truth is, is they, they can preach you know, holy living all they want. But if you're, if you're trying to live according to the old covenant, let me tell you, you're a hypocrite. Because not one man has ever been able to accomplish the old covenant except for Jesus Christ. That's right. He's the only one who was able to live according to the law perfectly. Amen? Anybody else who has tried has failed. And, and if you say otherwise, you're a hypocrite. You're a liar. Amen? So... Man, if we want our saltiness, if we, if we want to be the light of the world and be used by God and, and um, 
you know, be included in the hall of faith, as I call it, in Hebrews 11, then uh, we need to get a hold of grace and truth through Jesus Christ. That's our key to freedom, and that's the world's key to freedom. And man, it's not judging people. It's not hitting them over the head like you're the judge. God is the judge, right? God's the judge. Yet some Christians act like they're the judge. I decide what's right and wrong. You know, who died and made you God, right? Amen. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, there should never be any judgment. I mean, whatever God's called right and wrong, we should be calling right and wrong. Hallelujah. But it's not because we invented it. It's because we're just agreeing with him. Amen. He still sits on the throne. We're just here to execute his plan, right, in the earth, which is to save people, to save them, not to condemn them. Thank God for that, because God didn't condemn us when we were in our sin. Hallelujah. So guidance from mature believers can save you time and painful mistakes, but always check it against God's word for yourself. Be careful only to receive what is right, because people can steer you in the wrong direction. Amen. Even with myself, don't just take what, what I say and just, oh, yeah, that must be true. I love God, believe me, but I may get it wrong sometimes. Amen. I'm a human. I'm not perfect. I don't have perfect understanding of God's word. I'm growing just like you guys. Amen. So don't just take what I say and just, oh, pastor said it must be true. No, get, go to the word for yourself. Amen. And God will speak to you because he loves you and his spirit lives in you. The same spirit that's in me is in you. And he's the author of this word, and he can reveal it to you just like he can to me. Amen? Praise God. So that's why comparing everything they say with the Bible to see how it matches up is so important. Let go of what doesn't line up and hold on to what does. God's word must be the highest authority in your life. Hallelujah. You know, we are to serve one another, but let me tell you, the head of the church is Jesus Christ. There's nobody above him. Amen? Now, I'm, God's called me and Pastor, you know, Lujan to be the, the shepherds of this church. But let me tell you that the shepherd, capital S, is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And, and your, your sole commitment should be to him. Hallelujah. So if Pastor and I ever get off track or start doing something weird that's not according to the Bible, you follow Jesus. Amen? You know, Paul said, follow me, what? As I follow Christ. He didn't just say, follow me. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. So you better know who your pastor is following, <laughs> right? Or not just your pastor, but if you look up to somebody or somebody's in, uh, influencing you in a certain way, you better know who's influencing them and who's leading them. Otherwise, you'll have the blind leading the blind. Right? That's, that's how that happens. So don't be that person. The word of God must be highest authority in your life. And even in my life, there's... There's Bible teachers at the Karis Bible College, and, you know, Andrew Womack himself, the founder of Karis Bible College, that, man, I greatly, greatly admire, and I look up to him, and I appreciate him so much, but I haven't always agreed with every little thing that he said, you know, and he'll tell you, and he'll tell you himself um, not to do that, that <laughs> it's okay to disagree about some things, but I still love him, and I respect him tremendously, amen, that doesn't make me lose respect for him anymore, um, but the word of God has to be the highest authority in our life. Now, I, I will say this to kind of balance that truth is that it is good to be a part of a body because what that does is that protects you from the enemy, right? If you seclude yourself from the body, you're most likely going to come up with some very strange doctrine and strange beliefs. Why? Because being around the body helps you to stay on the straight and narrow. It helps you to keep... Um, you know, an even mind to where you don't get off into some weird stuff. There's some Christians who just, you know, like there, there's um, YouTube videos of pastors and, and Christian churches that, you know, celebrate rattlesnakes and different snakes. And they're up on stage dancing with their snakes. And uh, there's pastors that have died from getting bit by rattlesnakes doing that. And it's just crazy. It's here. It's not according to the word of God. And they just take one scripture out of context. And, um, you know, run with that. And so they probably got into those crazy beliefs because they were separated from the body. Amen? So stay in the body, and uh, that will definitely help you to stay on the right track. Praise God. That way, you know, God's called us to love each other, and that love includes correction. So if you see a brother or sister getting off into some weird stuff or fellowshipping with some weird stuff, that, I'm like, hmm, that doesn't look right. That doesn't sound right. I don't, I don't think that's Jesus, right? Then you can correct them. 
You can bring correction to them and say, look, in love, right, in gentleness, and say, you know, it's your life, do what you want, but I don't think that's right. <laughs> Just give it as a warning. It's because of your love for them. So uh, that's, the, that's the balance to that truth. But the Word of God is powerful. It is not just a book written by man about God. Uh, some people raise questions about the Bible and say there are many inconsistencies within it. You know what I find hilarious? Well, let me finish this. <laughs> many, many, uh, many good books called Apologetics answer these questions and validate the authority of the Bible. The Word is actually a book by God speaking to you through man. All the books in the Bible are supernaturally inspired and have been protected and preserved error-free. Your job is to interpret and believe God's word as it, as it was written. If you do, God himself will fellowship with you, and that's just awesome. Amen? That's just awesome. So, uh, that's all we have for tonight, but I just want to mention here that, um, <clears throat> let's see, I find it so funny when I find it so, so funny how people are able to make excuses for why they don't believe a certain thing in the Bible, right? If people find something in the Bible they don't like, like, for example, there's a few times in the Bible where he says, um, uh, you know, these things are sin and God hates these things. And it, it includes uh, homosexuality and different things like that, right? And so it's funny how people will go like, oh, well, and they try to act all smart try to act super smart and, and wise, but well, when you actually look up the original Greek for that verse, it's really not talking about homosexuality. They'll say something like that, or they'll say something to the extent of, um, along the years when the Bible was being translated from Greek to English, um, that was added or this was taken away. So in other words, what they always do is they always try to attack the authenticity of God's word to make it be what they want it to be. So they can believe the way they want to believe. Amen? Amen. And again, so what's happening is we're not exalting God's word as the highest authority. What's happening is we're exalting our opinions as the highest authority and we're just using parts of the Bible to reinforce what we believe, right? Rather than submitting under the word of God and say, okay, if God's word says this, this is what it is. There's no questions. If God's word is highest authority, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And we come, we submit under that. We say, God, you know, I don't understand this. This kind of hurts a little bit, but this is the truth. And Jesus said, if you know the truth, it'll set you free. And there's a lot of Christians in bondage because they're not going to God's word as the ultimate final truth in their life. They're not respecting it as the highest authority in their life. Amen? They'll take bits and pieces and use it to reinforce their opinion of what they believe. So they make themselves a God instead of serving the God. There's people who say they're Christians. They have no idea who Jesus is. Why? Because they take God's message of love and grace and they reject God's message of everyone was born into sin. So then they say, you know, don't judge, love everyone, regardless of anything. And, and so what they do is, there's a truth to that, but they twist it. They twist it. Well, who are we to stop true love, right, between two of the same sexes? Who are we to stop that? I'll tell you, go to a gay parade, and you'll find very quickly it's not about love. Nothing to do with love. It's all about lust. It's disgusting. And the way that they're using kids these days to promote their agenda you can see it is disgusting. And it is a stink in the nostril of God. And I'm, I'm telling you, we need to love these people. I'm not telling you to hate them. I'm telling you, you need to love them. But you need to hate the sin. And you need to call what's wrong, wrong. Amen? But we need to love these people. We really do. We don't need to be going, you know, I hate you. Or, you know, God hates you. And that's not going to save them. Praise God. All of us, the whole world is born into sin, and we need to be preaching the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is that we all, we're all born into sin. Jesus is the only way. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you're involved in right now. God loves you, and he wants you saved, but you have got to repent of your sins and deny yourself. Amen? To embrace Christ. Everyone who comes to Christ has to deny themselves. Every single one. I have to deny the sinful passion, the sinful lust that is leading me to do things that are offensive to God, that are contrary to God. 
Hallelujah. I have to reject that. I have to deny myself. I have to die to myself and say, God, I'm repenting of my sin. I'm turning of my sin. I see it. I see how horrible I am. Amen. I see how much I fall short of your righteousness. But God, I thank you for your grace. So we reject ourselves to embrace who we are in Christ. Amen. And in Christ, we are made holy. We are made righteous. Why? Because of the shedding of his blood. And let me tell you, God loves everyone, sinner and righteous alike. He loves us. He loves the straight man, the homosexual man. Amen. The straight woman, the lesbian woman. He loves us. But we have got to lead people to Christ. And that includes repentance from sin to trust in the grace of God. Trust in his forgiveness. Amen. Amen. So I'm not sure you know, who that was for. But take it and run with it. You know, we've got to go back to God's word. This is the highest authority. And when we exalt this, that's when freedom comes. That's when freedom comes. And we exalt this above all. Praise God. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that, you're, that you are a good God. Your word is good. Thank you, Jesus. Your words are life to us. They refresh our soul. Father God, I pray that we would take your word more seriously. I pray that we would take time, take time, Lord, to take refuge in your word, to absorb your word, to build our life on your word, around your word, that your word would become the center of the way that we think and the way that we live and the way that we parent and the way that we work, the way that we're friends with people, that your, your word, God, would become the center of how we have a relationship with our spouses. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, every part of our life. Thank you for loving us, God. You are so merciful. Yes, Lord. And we thank you that you're faithful in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. If there are people out there, Lord, who are doubting, they're having trouble believing, I just pray in Jesus' name that your Holy Spirit would supernaturally reveal your love to them. Yes, Lord. Reveal yourself to them, God. Help them to spiritually understand yes. your love, your kindness, your grace, your acceptance, because your word tells us we are accepted in the beloved. We are accepted in Jesus Christ. Help us to understand that truly, God, by the power of your Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, I just speak to deceiving spirits who are keeping people's minds closed and darkened to the light of God's word. I rebuke you in Jesus' name Jesus. and command you to get your hands off of God's people, off of the lost world, that people have been praying for, loved ones, family, friends. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You've been praying for them. Right now, in Jesus' name, I command those deceiving, blinding spirits to be gone. Hallelujah. That they may see the light. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, the Bible says that um, the enemy, he blinds our minds to the truth, lest we should believe the gospel of Christ. So... It's a spiritual battle that we're in. Amen? And people need to see to be free. Praise the Lord. Well, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're watching online, um, you know, feel, feel free to um, comment below or even message us if you have any questions or, or comments or anything like that. But please, um, you know, if you like this, like it, share it. Um, hopefully it'll be a blessing to uh, other people who follow you. God bless.